Today, I would like to share with you. Remember last Sunday, I was not here because I was the speaker of a church anniversary. It was their 21st church anniversary. At sabi ko, sana marating din ng haven of worship ang higit pa sa 21 years. Amen. And um, I was so blessed when I was preparing the message that um, I felt the touch from the Holy Spirit to also share the same message to you today. Dahil sayang ang salita ng Panginoon kung hindi natin nanamnamin lahat-lahat. And glory to God. So, the message for today is entitled, What Does the Lord Require of Us? The main text is found in Micah chapter 6, verse 8. And it says there, can you click? My thing is not, oh, oh sorry. All right, it says there, He has shown you, O mortal, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? Let's read all together. To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. See, this is a very nice verse to memorize. Because this verse, this text, is one of the most comprehensive and all-embracing statements in the Old Testament. All in one, itong versikulong ito. It poses a question, but at the same time, it also gives the answer to the question, right? So what is the question? The question is, what does the Lord require of you? What does God want us to do? And then the answer is in the same verse itself. And the answer is threefold. Ano yung tatlong answer na yon? Number one, to act justly. Number two, to love mercy. And number three, to walk humbly with our God. To those of you, who want to learn to make a sermon and to preach, this is a very good text to use. May tema ka na, may tatlong main points ka na. So yun na yun, okay? So if you are asked to preach, biglaan, just remember, Micah 6.8, mag-sermon ka na. But of course, today I will expound the message. Now, you see, this is a very good question to ask church. Because if you ask this question, it is a sign of spiritual maturity. Can everyone say spiritual maturity? Okay. It's a question wherein you are not just asking anymore. Hindi mo na lang tinatanong, Lord, what can you do for me? Because that question is a childish question. Lord, ano bang mapapala ko kung maglilingkod ako sa'yo? Usually, mga bata sa Espiritu ang nagtatanong noon. But now that we are maturing in Christ, church, we are now eight years old, hallelujah, we begin to ask the Lord, Lord, what do you require from me? What is it that you want me to do? So this church is a cry. It is a question of a Christian who is maturing in the Lord. Kayo ba mga kapatid? Heart to heart talk. Are you asking God, Lord, what do you want me to do? So this is the heartbeat of a growing Christian whose desire is to please and honor the Lord in everything he does. If you agree, say amen and give a clap offering to the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. So we will not divert any further. Hindi na tayo lalayo pa. Like I've said, this is a very straightforward verse and message. So first, let's take a look at the question, what does the Lord require of us? Huh? Kikita nyo dyan, yung salitang require, I put it in red color. Now, the word require is a very serious word. If something is required, it means it is needed. 
It is necessary. It's compulsory. Hindi pwedeng takasan. For example, in school requirements, pag sinabing requirements required, no, you can never pass a course unless you have completed and submitted it. Yan ang problema kung minsan ni Ate Lorna kasi sina, binigyan ka na nga ng listahan ng required papers. E ayaw mong isubmit yung required. Ang sabi, can you submit your birth certificate? Mamimilit ka pa sabihin mo, pwede po bang yung baptismal certificate na lang? E birth certificate nga yung required. See, requirement, required, hindi pwedeng lampasan. So what does the Lord require of us? Ano ba yung mga bagay-bagay na inaasahan ng Diyos, ini-expect ng Diyos o inuutos ng Diyos mula sa atin? And we already know the answer, but we will go through them one by one. Okay? Number one, God requires us to act justly. In other translations, sabi doon, to do justice. Or in other translations, sabi, to do what is right. Sa Tagalog Bible, sabi doon, maging makatarungan. In Ilocano, agaramid tiki na imbag. Hmm. Now let me tell you a little background of what was going on in Israel during the time of Prophet Micah. Do you know who Prophet Micah is? Prophet Micah is one of the minor prophets. And he lived 700 years before the birth of Jesus Christ. So pag sinabi natin 700 years at ang isang generation ay 100 years, so around 7 generations before Jesus. So during the time of Micah, the whole land of Israel was living in injustice. Walang justicia. The powerful were abusing the powerless. Actually, if you will read Micah chapter 3, it was elaborated, the injustice between verses 9 to 11. No? Sabi doon, tiniscribe ni Micah yung injustice sa lupain ng Israel. Sabi ni Micah, listen to me, you leaders of Israel. You hate justice. And you twist all that is right. You are building Jerusalem on a foundation of what? Murder and corruption. Wow, tindi. Your rulers make decisions based on what? Based on bribes. Ito matindi. You priests teach God's laws only for a price. You prophets won't prophesy unless you are paid. Yet, all of you claim to depend on the Lord. So here we can see the injustice throughout the land. Nabubuhay sila sa krimen, sa korupsyon, sa suhol at pandaraya. Ang mga nananalo lamang sa kaso, yung mga nakakapanuhol lang. Antindi, maging mga pari at mga propeta, ayaw nilang magturo kung walang bayad. So only the rich can afford and are, who can afford are given the favor and then the poor who don't, do not have the means were exploited leading to an impartial and unfair society. And so church, it is God's desire that His people will live in a just and fair society. Requirement ng Panginoon that His people will act justly. You see, from the time of the Old Testament, pre-provide na ni Lord yung maraming mga iba't ibang paraan. God has already provided many ways in order for the poor to be fed, for the widows to be cared for, the orphans to be nurtured, the strangers to be welcomed. But very sadly, over and over and over again, both Israel's spiritual and government leaders, they bend the rules for their own benefit. While at the same time, they pretend to be righteous and upright. 
You see, when I was a new college graduate back in the Philippines, <clears throat> graduate ako ng college 2001, somewhere there. I was invited to join the Rotary Club. And every time we start our meetings, we would always recite the four-way test. Alamang, nababasa nyo to. pag aakit kayo ng bagyo, la union, nandun yun. Four the four. Number one, is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it build goodwill and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to all concerned? And so tuwing mag start yung meeting namin sa Rotary Club, nire-recite namin ito lahat sabay-sabay. Ang gandang i-recite, hindi ba? Now, as an early childhood educator, see, one of the lessons that we also teach in preschool, alam nyo kung ano yung pinaka-main lesson na inaaral sa preschool, lalo na dito sa Canada, hindi ABC, hindi 1, 2, 3. It's to share and to be faithful. Now, even 24 Horas, ah, GMA, ano yung motto ng 24 Horas? Walang kinikilingan, walang pinoprotektahan, walang kisinungalungan, blah, 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 kasinung, kasinungalingan, serbisyong totoo lamang. Ha? Huh? Now, why am I saying all these things? You see, brothers and sisters in the Lord, even in the secular world, they are teaching the virtue of justice and being fair. Tinuturo yan sa school, sa gobyerno, makikita natin sa TV. But church, listen to me. Let us understand that God's requirement to act justly is not mainly directed to our modern political parties. The instruction is not targeting mainly our government leaders. It's not mainly a requirement to the secular world. Instead, to act justly is a requirement given by God to us, to His people. Therefore, to act justly is our duty our job, our responsibility as children of God. Can I hear an amen, church? Now, some of you might be asking, ano ba ang mga practical ways to act justly, pastoral? You see, the most synonym term for the phrase to act justly is to be fair. Minsan, hirap nating igras pag legal terms, ano? justice, to act justly. Pero simplihan natin, to act justly simply means to be fair. And how can we be fair? Marami. Kulang ang isang araw to discuss the different ways how to be fair. But let us just be practical. Number one, how can we be fair to God and to ourselves? Ito tanong, are we giving justice? Are we being fair to God with the gifts and talents that He has given us? Or are we like that one servant who buried his talent under the ground and never made use of it? Binibigyan mo ba ng hustisya ang mga biyaya at regalong ibinigay sa iyo ng Diyos? na inaasahan niyang gamitin mo para sa ikalalago ng iglesia o ipinagdadamot at itinatago mo? Number two, how can we be fair to our families? Sa pamilya natin. Fair in what? In terms of time and energy. O, doon na lang unahin natin. Are we being fair to our children by spending quality time with them? Minsan, yun yung nagiging problem sa mga church leaders, especially pastors. They are so busy in their church activities, they neglect their families. So, ang dami-daming mga pastor's kid na nagiging rebellious. See, children, vice versa, are we being fair 
to our parents by giving them respect and love and obedience that they deserve. Oh, number three, how can we be fair to our neighbors and our community? Ito hindi natin masyadong pinapansin yung mga kapitbahay natin sa community natin. Pero alam nyo ba, nakatingin sila sa ating mga Kristiyano. How can we be fair? Ito, yung mga bakuran ba ninyo malinis? You are not throwing your garbage in other people's territories? Are we not, uh, are we causing disturbances to our neighborhood? O kung magpatugtog tayo ng karaoke, wagas. Huh? Are we following the rules and regulations of the land? O tayo pang mga naturingang kristyano yung hindi marunong sumunod sa batas trapiko or parking regulations. You see, like I've said, there are many, many different ways of applying this virtue of being fair and to act justly. But to do justice, to do what is right, to be fair, whatever the application may be, Church, always ask yourself, am I doing the right thing? Amen. Hallelujah. Pakitanong sa katabi mo, fair ka ba kapat? See, sometimes simple things, no? Uh, like right now, are you being fair to God? Are you giving your full attention to God right now? Attention na lang, di ba? O busy kayong nagtitingin sa Google kung ano yung best gift ever na worth $30. Let's be fair. Amen? When it's time for the Lord, give God what is due to God. Amen? Palapakan natin ng Panginoon. Hallelujah! Alright, so that's point number one. Point number two, what? What else does God require of us? Ano ulit yung number one? To act justly. And then number two is to love mercy. In other translations, it says to love kindness. Mercy is also known as kindness. In Tagalog, ibigin ang kawaan, ang pagiging maawain. O mahalin ang paggawa ng mabuti. In Ilocano, ay atam ti panagaramid ti kinaimbag. To love mercy. Now, what is mercy? According to Miriam Webster Dictionary, mercy is a blessing that is an act of divine favor or compassion. So when we say, Lord, have mercy, it means you are asking God for blessing, you are asking God for favor, you are asking God for His compassion. Panginoon, kaawaan mo kami. Kaasyan na kami, Apo. When do we usually say this to God? Diba? We say this when we are in a desperate condition. When we are in a dire situation. Na kumbaga, wala nang ibang makakatulong sa atin kundi Diyos lang. One of the most popular examples of showing compassion in the Bible is what? Sige, trivia nga. Anong kwento sa Bible? Yung sikat na sikat na kwento, kahit unbeliever, alam ito eh. That talks about mercy, kindness, and compassion. O diba? Yan yun. The parable of the good Samaritan. We're not gonna read it anymore. You already know the story. And we know that the Good Samaritan helped a perfect stranger. He does not even know the background of this person. Actually, kaaway na lahi. Yung, yung nasugatan, hudyo. Yung tumulong, Samaritano. And during that time, Samaritans and Jews have no dealings with each other. Mortal na magkaaway yan. So he is not friends or family with him. Wala siyang obligasyon. Wala siyang responsibilidad para tulungan ang taong ito. Dahil hindi niya kaano-ano. But he looked 
pass on all those things. The good Samaritan showed pity and compassion no matter who this person is. Question, church. When was the last time you gave mercy to a perfect stranger? When I was still young, I, I remember a sermon illustration of my father, and I want to relay this story. There was a boy who was begging on the streets one winter night. The snow was falling, it was cold, and he does not have the appropriate clothing to keep him warm. So isang batang lalaki na mamalimos, malamig, nag snow at hindi mainit yung kanyang suot. So as this boy was begging in one of the corner streets, a man approached him. May lumapit na mama sa kanya. And the man asked him, Boy, are you okay? Do you have a place to stay for the night? And then the boy said, No, sir, I am an orphan. My parents died five years ago and I have been living on the street. Now the man said, Do you want to have a place, place to stay for the night? The boy got excited and said, oh yes, of course, that would be very, very helpful if I have a warm place to stay. And the man said, okay, I will give you instruction. And I hope you will be able to follow my instructions. Listen very carefully. The man said, okay, I want you to go straight to York Street. And when you reach the second stoplight, turn right. When you turn right, count seven houses. And house number seven, you will not miss it because it has a red door. When you reach that door, I want you to ring the doorbell. A lady will open the door for you. If the lady asks you, how can I help you? I want you to tell him this. I, I want you to tell her this. Tell her, John 3.16. Can you remember that? What is, he about, what is he going to say? John 3.16. So the man said, you think you can remember my instructions? Oh yes sir, I can remember it very well. And the, the boy said, thank you so much. Thank you for your help. So the boy started to walk very, very fast. So he said, okay, go straight to York Street. And then... First stoplight, turn right. No. Second stoplight, turn right. But then at the back of his mind, he keeps on repeating, John 3.16. John 3.16. He cannot forget those words. And so, first stoplight, not yet. He has to walk one more stoplight. Second stoplight, ah, turn right. But what is he about to say? John 3.16. So he turned right and he counted how many houses again? Seven houses. And on the seventh house, what is the color of the door? Red door. But what is he going to say again? So he rang the doorbell and indeed, a lady opened the door. And when the lady opened the door, the lady asked, Hi, how can I help you? And the boy was trembling and with a nervous voice, he said, Ah, John 3.16? Hindi siya joke. Alala niya, John 3.16. And so the lady, when he, she heard that, she opened the door wide and she said, Oh yes, come, come, come inside. I am expecting for you. I wondered, how? Oh, this word must be magical. So the boy went in. The woman said, come, come. Sit here by the fireplace. Keep yourself warm. I will be right back. And so as he sat down, it was really indeed cozy there. And then when the woman went away, the boy heard the woman turn on the washroom water. The woman went back to him and said, Okay, son, I have prepared a warm bath for you. And inside the washroom, there is also a pair of clean pajamas. 
you know, you are exactly the same size as my son who is already in heaven. And so, the boy walked quietly to the washroom. But at the back of him, his mind, he was wondering, 360. There must be something magical to this. And so, while he was cleaning himself, he was enjoying the, the soap and the shampoo and the warm bath. He put on the new pajamas. When he opened the washroom door, he smelled the aroma of bacon and eggs. Bacon and eggs. And then he followed the smell and went to the kitchen. And the woman said, oh, you're, you're already cleaned up. Come, come. I prepared a bacon and egg sandwich for you. Come and enjoy your meal. And the boy was so happy. He doesn't remember his last meal was probably like five years ago when his parents was still alive. So he enjoyed the meal. And then the woman said, after you finish your meal, come and follow me upstairs. He finished the meal. He indeed followed the woman upstairs and into a bedroom. The woman said to the boy, this is going to be your room. I hope that you will feel cozy and nice tonight. Now the boy felt, felt a warm feeling from the top of his head to the sole of his feet. And tears start to fall from his eyes. He felt the warmth and the love of this woman towards him. And then he couldn't help it and said to the woman, Ma'am, before you leave, can I ask you something? What is the meaning of John 3.16? And so the woman said, Okay, boy, sit at the edge of the bed. The woman took the Bible from the top of the dresser, read John 3.16. Now the verse Goes like this, you all know it well. For God so loved the world, gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but will have everlasting life. The woman explained the message of salvation to the boy. And because the Holy Spirit opened the heart of this boy, he understood the message of salvation, and received the Lord Jesus Christ as his master and as his You see, the woman who opened the door for him and received him was the wife of a pastor. And the pastor was the man who gave the instructions to the boy. Well, we don't know if this is to life story or a made up story, but it could be done in reality, isn't it? You see, this kind of mercy is what God is requiring. The mercy that was given by the good Samaritan, who among us has ever done such a merciful act to someone? We don't know. And that pastor and that wife pastor who welcomed a perfect stranger in their home and gave their best to that boy. Can we remember something like that that we have done to anyone else? You see, brothers and sisters, here in our church, we have a ministry where our focus is to show mercy to the less fortunate. Do you know what ministry is this? This is our missions and outreach ministry that is being led by Sister Jonalyn Arsenio. Some of you might not be aware, but we are sending a monthly love gift 
to at least 15 pastors in the Philippines. 18 now, Ate Lorna. Almost 20 pastors. Last year and this year, we have sent at least, hindi bababa, sa sampo, 10 balikbayan boxes to different churches in the Philippines. And this is through our iShare and the gowns that were given by Sister uh, Richelle's amo. So kung titignan natin, no, parang ang daming binibigay ng church natin sa missions. Pero kung tutusin, mga kapatid, kung kikilatisin nating mabuti, yung mga binibigay natin, hindi ba parang tira-tira lang naman natin yun? Hindi ba talaga tayo nag effort Imagine, each pastor... Is receiving, by the way, we are giving the tithes of our tithes, which is an average of, let's say, $500 a month. So yung tinatanggap nila, it's an average of 1,000 pesos per pastor per month. That's $25 per month. At anong ko sa inyo, sinong gustong magpastor sa Pilipinas? Susuportahan ko kayo ng $25 a month. Kulang pa para sa isang kabang bigas. Alahating kaban lang. Kulang pa. If one kaban now is more, 2,500, 3,000. And then the contents. Yung laman ng mga box na pinapadala natin. Hindi ba mga unwanted at patapon na rin naman na natin yung mga yun? So individually, we have not really exerted much effort yet in showing mercy and favor to the least of our brethren. And you know the word of Jesus. Anong sabi ni Jesus? Even if you give a glass of water to refresh someone to the least of my brethren, you have already done that to me. Church, hindi natin pinapansin. Pero requirement ito ng Panginoon sa atin. Masyado nating pinagtutuunan yung requirement na ang ganda ng church service, ang ganda ng anniversary natin, marami tayong pagkain. Pero yun ba talaga yung requirement ng Panginoon? Sometimes nakaka-guilty. Kayang-kaya nating magmandarin. Libo-libo ang ginagastos. Pero kakapiranggot yung napupunta sa act of mercy. Church, I was deeply touched when I was doing this sermon. Because that is my prayer to the Lord. Sabi ko, Lord, on our eighth year, it's a new beginning. What do you want from us? What do you require from us? And I thank God because I was invited as the speaker of this church because it was a wake-up call, a wake-up message. Just leave and show mercy. It's the Lord's requirement. Can I hear an amen, church? What is the best time to give mercy but on Christmas time? Napapanahon, mga kapatid. Now, third and the last, not only does He require us to act justly and to act mercy, but the Lord requires us to walk humbly with our God. Many pastors and Bible scholars regard this, number three, as the superlative of all three requirements. Ito yung the best. Ito yung pinaka sa tatlo. Bakit? Because it all starts Everything starts with our walk with God. Everything starts with our personal relationship with God. You see, to walk with God, it reminds us of God's garden walks with Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden in the cool of the day. God wants to walk with us. 
He cherishes His relationship with us. God wants us to communicate with Him and to spend time with Him. So how do we spend time with God? How do we walk with God? Simple, in prayer, sa pananalangin. In our daily study of God's Word, sa pag-aaral natin ng salita ng Diyos. In our worship and in our fellowship, sa ating pagpupuri at pagsasamba. You see, whenever we pray, whenever we study God's Word, whenever we worship, we can either do this alone or with the body of Christ, with other people. We can even do it in person or online. See, our walk is our way of life. To walk with God means to walk in all His ways and be led in a daily fellowship with Him. Deuteronomy 10, 11 to 12, 11, 12 and 13, sabi doon, And now Israel, what does the Lord your God require of you? But to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways, and to love Him. To serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and to keep the commandments of the Lord and His statutes which I command you today for your own good. To walk in all His ways. Lumakad sa lahat ng Kanyang mga daan, Kanyang mga kalsada. Now, how do we know the ways of God? Paano natin malalaman kung yun nga ang daan ng Diyos o hindi? Simple. We have our roadmap. You know what our roadmap is? The Bible. That is our roadmap. Pag nawawala tayo, mag-GPS tayo, bubuksan natin ang mapa, same thing. If we're lost, we do not know what decision to make, let's read our roadmap. It's the Bible. Ang linaw-linaw, Proverbs, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my feet. Bakit kailangan natin ng ilaw? Para makita natin kung saan tayo dadaan. Now church, I hear a lot of people, they pray like this. Alam niyo yung panalangin ng maraming tao, sabi nila, Lord, please be with us wherever we go. Samahan mo kami, Panginoon, sa mga lakad namin. Now this is a very good prayer to pray to God. It's a good request to us to God, but please, Church, be aware that God will not grant this request every single time. Hindi sasagutin ng Diyos lagi yung request natin na Lord, samahan mo kami sa lakad namin. Alam nyo kung bakit? Because God will not walk with you wherever you want to go. It does not work like that. Hindi siya sasama kung saan mo lang gustong pumunta. We have to walk the other way around. It's not about where we want to go, but it is all about where does God want us to go, hindi ba? Always remember church, it's always about God. It's about His will. It's about where He leads us. Pero kung minsan matigas ang ulo natin, yung flashlight, nakatulok. Pero ang gusto nating daanan, yung sa madilim. Can we expect God to be with us in that dark path? Tapos magtataka tayo. Akala ko ba, Lord, sasamahan mo ko kung saan man ako pumunta? E balik pa. Hindi ka sumama sa gusto niyang puntahan. Tumihis ka na. That's why we always sing all the time, Where He leads me, I will follow. Diba? Anta natin palagi, I'll walk with you wherever you go. Through tears and joy, I trust in you. Walking with God and following His footprints, church. Yun ang requirement ng Panginoon. Now, let's reflect on ourselves. Yung mga dinadaanan ba natin, sigurado ba tayo na daanan yan ng Diyos? At pathway yan ng Diyos para. 
Now take note, church. There's a very important adverb. What is that? That was used here. Ano yung adverb na yon? We are not only required to just walk with God, but rather, we are required to walk what? Humbly with our God. Yung salitang humbly, it makes a big difference. So what does this mean? How can we walk humbly with our God? You see, the Hebrew word for the word humbly is modesty. As God's followers, we are to walk modestly or meekly with Him. Modestly and meekly is the opposite of proudly or arrogantly. We are not to exalt ourselves over others. Treating others as though they are less worth than us. Hindi tayo pwedeng magmalaki o magmayabang o itaas ang ating mga sarili. Instead, to walk in humility is to be free from vanity, egotism, boastfulness, and pretension. Amen. Alam nyo itong matindi, oh, sabi sa James chapter 4, verse 6. Alam nyo kung ano ang kontra sa Diyos? Ayaw na ayaw ng Diyos, hate na hate ng Diyos, ang taong mayabang. God opposes the proud. Kontra siya sa mga mapagmataas. But, He gives grace to the humble. If we are lowly before the Lord, He gives us grace. Ano ba yung grace? Grace blessings na mga hindi natin deserve. Wow! Eh, tataka tayo, Lord, bakit siya? Ang dami niyang blessing na ganun, hindi naman niya deserve yun. Eh kasi, mababa ang loob niya. Humble siya. So the Lord mismo ang nagbibigay ng grace sa kanya. You see, if you are walking humbly with God, it means you will not seek your honor for your own name. Hindi ba rin ang hindi kasikat? Basta ang importante, yung pangalan ng Diyos ang sikat. All of this is because you know that it is God who has gifted you and enabled you to achieve and to succeed. Mahirap yung nagbubuhat ng sariling bangko. Dahil lalo tayong ilulublob ng Diyos. Therefore, you want the honor and the glory to be God's alone. Ito ang ibig sabihin ng to walk humbly with our God. Walking humbly with our God means you will not be proud or self-reliant. Self-reliant, yung kaya ko to. Kahit wala ang Diyos. Because humility is you are not depending only on your own strength. Rather, you will continuously seek the strength from God. May katuloy yun, hindi pwedeng sabihin natin na I can do all things, period. I can do it, period. No. It has to be that, that, that. I can do all things, what is the kasunod? Through Christ, who gives me strength. Ayun, maning-mani natin yung verse na yun kasi third year anniversary natin yun. Unstoppable. You see, humility is the place of entire dependency on God. Lord, I depend on you. I cannot do this without you because we often depend on our own abilities. But instead, we need to depend on God completely. Now, church, we have another ministry that will help us humble down before our God. Alam nyo kung ano yung ministry na yun? Kaka-revive lang. Last Sunday. This is our prayer warrior ministry. We have just recently revived this last Sunday through our golden vessels na talaga namang laging maagang dumadating. Praise the Lord. Alakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Led by Sister Norma and then Sister Delia, Sister Wilma. They were so happy when I proposed them this project. 
And then it is a confirmation from God na gusto ng Panginoon na gawin natin ito. Because God requires us to walk humbly with our God. And the best place and the best position of humility is on our knees in prayer. Amen. Paliwala ang mga pagod natin. Paliwala yung mga pagpa-practice-practice ninyo, music team, kung hindi nyo sisimulan sa mga tuhod ninyo ng panahon. At tapusin din sa panalangin. It starts with humility from God. And then we will be surprised. Unexpected things will happen because it is not going to be our fight anymore. It's going to be the Lord's fight. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Church, as I end this message for today, once again, we are being asked, what does the Lord require of us? Ano ba ang hinihiling at inaasahan ng Diyos mula sa atin? Hallelujah! And church, it's threefold. The Lord requires us to act justly, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with our God. Church, how many of you wants to stand with me and respond to God, Lord? Yes, Lord, we will obey these things that you want us to do. Church, the Lord has spoken. It is now time for us to respond.